In this video, we'll examine the spherical pendulum, which is the 3D analog of the simple pendulum. Just like in the case of the simple pendulum, the spherical pendulum can oscillate in the vertical frame, like so, by a measured angle theta, where theta is the angle from the, horizontal, uh, from the vertical. But in addition to oscillating in the vertical frame, it also it oscillates horizontally. So you can imagine that this whole setup is on a turntable that is oscillating with some angular rotation phi about this y-axis, with the y-axis being vertically upward. So the y-axis points up, and the black axes are the ground-fixed axes, where the x and the z-axis are defined in the horizontal plane. Okay. First thing we need to do is the kinematics of the problem, and for that we look at what is the projection of this line L onto this y-axis. And by inspection you should be able to see that that is L times cosine of theta. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, let me change pens for this. This similarly is L Again, L times cosine, excuse me, L times sine of theta. And then based on that, we can now look at the projection along the x-axis, which is that way. And that would just be L times sine of theta times cosine of phi. And then finally, the projection along the z-axis would actually be in this direction. It's in the negative direction because z is positive that way. And this would be uh, L sine of theta times sine of phi. Okay, now it makes it really easy to write down the kinematics. Let me do it here in the corner. So kinematics And we can just read it off the figure. So the x projection is equal to this, which is L sine of theta cosine of phi. Oops. L sine of theta times cosine of phi. Y is equal to L cosine of theta, but it's negative because this is downward and Y is positive upward. So that is minus L times cosine of theta. And then finally, Z, which is also negative, because Z is pointing in the negative direction of the, the Z axis. And that is L sine of theta sine of phi, with a negative sign. L sine of theta sine of phi. And let's give these some numbers. One, two and 3. And uh, let me just do this just to make some space here. Alright, so now that we have this, we can find the velocities. And the velocities are derived just by taking the time derivative of each of the components. So velocities and we we'll start off by writing x dot, and when I take the derivative of x, I get L theta dot times cosine of theta, cosine of phi. And then by the product rule, minus L phi dot sine of theta times sine of phi. And that's because the derivative of cosine of phi is minus sine of phi. Got it? All right, and that will be equation number four. And then y dot is quite simple. That is just L theta dot times sine of theta. The minus cancels. And that's equation five. And then finally, z dot is equal to, this is just the minus stay, so it's minus sine of theta 
excuse me, minus cosine of theta sine of phi minus L phi dot sine of theta cosine of phi. And that would be equation 6. Okay. Now we can go ahead and write out the Lagrangian. Uh, I'll write it down here, the Lagrangian. And then that's L equals T minus V. Call that equation 7. Third time's a charm with this. Okay. And then let's start off with the potential, because that's really easy to write. Potential of the pendulum is just mg times the height, and the height in this case is y. So it can be written as mgy, which from equation 2, from equation 2, uh, implies that v is equal to minus uh, mgl cosine theta. That's equation 8. Let me put a little red box around it because we're going to be using that in a little bit. One more time. Okay, so let's continue on the next page. I've gone ahead and copied the velocities down here since we needed to find the kinetic energy. Uh, the kinetic energy, which is T, can be written as one half mv squared which in this case is one-half times m x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared. And then we've got to go ahead and square all of this. So that is equal to one-half times m times uh, l squared theta dot squared cosine... Now, some of this cancels. Um, this cancels with this. Okay, and I can rewrite this. I'm going to take the L squared out of the parentheses. So let me rewrite this as this is equal to 1 half times ML squared times... Okay, that comes from this part here. Okay. Then these are trig identities. So this, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So I can rewrite this. Well, wrong color. I can rewrite this as this is equal to 1 half times m l squared. Okay, and now this means that T can be written as one half times M L squared times theta dot squared theta dot squared plus phi dot squared times sine squared of theta. And we'll call that equation 9. Okay, now we have all the components we need to be able to find the equations of motion using Lagrange's equations. So turning the page, we can now rewrite this as, well, let's write this, L equals T minus V. That equation was from earlier. And this implies that L is equal to one half times m l squared times um, let me just write it out plus one half m oops m l squared theta dot 
plus one half ml squared times phi dot squared sine squared theta plus m g l cosine of theta and the reason for the plus is because of this minus sign the potential was had a negative sign okay this we'll call equation 10. all right and then let's write out lagrange's equations in general form lagrange And this says that D by DT of partial L partial Q dot sub I minus DL partial L partial Q sub I is equal to Q sub I. Okay, and in this case there is no forcing function, so the Q sub I is equal to zero. All right, we'll call this equation 11. Let me change to black. Equation 11. All right, so the first equation of motion is by assuming that your first coordinate is theta. Uh, if we take the derivative with respect to theta dot, the only term that has a theta dot explicitly is the first term, and then the time derivative of that. So that becomes m l squared theta dot, and the time derivative makes it a double dot. Okay, and then the derivative of these, or L, with respect to theta, but there's a negative sign, excuse me, a negative sign from here. So it's minus ML squared phi dot squared cosine theta times sine theta. Okay, the derivative of sine squared theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. 2 cancels the half, and there's a minus sign. Okay, and then the derivative of this with respect to theta is minus sine theta, but the negative sign makes it a plus, so we get plus mgl times sine of theta. And that is equal to zero. And let's just divide through by ml squared. So divide by ml squared. And what you're left with is, oops, let's do it in black, theta double dot minus ml squared goes away. So phi dot squared cosine theta times sine of theta plus this becomes g over L times sine of theta equals zero. And that is your first equation of motion. We'll call that equation 11. But since this is now a two degree of freedom problem, there's obviously a second equation of motion. And we find that by letting i equal phi, in this case. And what we find is, taking the derivative, you end up with t by t, t. Well, the ml squared, so let me take the ml squared out and write it as ml squared times the time derivative, d by dt, of phi dot sine squared theta. Okay, because from this Lagrangian here, when I take the derivative with respect to phi dot, the only thing that survives is this term, and it becomes 2 times phi dot. Okay, and the 2 cancels the half. So this is equal to 0. Okay, clearly we can ignore the ml squared, that just cancels. And now the derivative of this, we, we got to use the product rule, is 
phi double dot sine squared theta minus it will be phi uh, no it won't it will be a plus two phi dot sine theta cosine theta I'll check that now whoops sine theta cosine theta times theta dot so what did I do? The derivative of this by the product rules, the derivative, phi double dot times sine squared. And then sine squared, the derivative of that is 2 sine theta times cosine theta theta dot. 2 sine theta cosine theta theta dot. That's a mouthful. Okay, but if I now divide through by sine squared theta, let me just say divide by sine squared theta now I get phi double dot plus 2 theta dot phi dot this ends up with cosine divided by sine which is cotangent and that is your second equation of motion that governs the phi direction. Oh, let me do it neater than that. And let me give it some numbers. So that would be number 12. Okay. And those are the equations of motion. We're pretty much done. A useful check at this point would be um, maybe if we set phi equal to phi dot equal to zero, this would be the case of the simple pendulum now, but then you would find from equation 11, you would end up with theta double dot, the second term would cancel, plus g over l sine theta equals zero, and this is the simple pendulum. And this is the spherical pendulum. Right, that's about all I want to say for this video. I hope you found something useful in it. If, it did, if you did, go ahead and smash those like buttons so others can get to see it too. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave us a comment in the section below. Thank you for watching and we'll catch up with you in the next video.